All right, man. Welcome back to yet another episode of I'm Down. I'm your host, George. It's your boy, Al, man. Uh, we got Jay in the back setting up uh, the board. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, uh, Jay always does random stuff in the back, y'all. He never does what he's supposed to do. Um, and we got a special guest. Did say he's working hard? Uh, is he? I that's that's not, not what I... Or Harley working. Which one before. is it? Or Harley <laughs> working. <laughs> All right, we got a special guest today. Uh, someone that, if you've been watching I'm Down from the beginning, this has been our first guest, our recurring guest. A uh, very close personal friend of mine, a very close personal friend to the podcast. We got Lewis uh once again welcome again my bro what's um, going on so. to the boys i'm yes, in georgie love you guys man yeah man thank you for coming through bro appreciate it man um and so you know like, like i was telling you right now right so you know a, a lot of times especially in this time in our life right we're trying to figure it out right we're all trying to go through through our own transitions we're all trying to figure out what path to take and all of this right i think 2020 was like to figure it out Ooh, year. man yeah <laughs> man it, it's definitely the year we have to sit right with yourself the most i think and and I think that you know now it's still the same case, but you know again we're just all trying to like trying to roll out that carpet in other words, right? So I feel like you have been someone. You're 26 now. You've been someone who you know you know. went through I think a lot of ups and downs already as far as like you know what this journey c- consists mm-hmm. of. You get what mm-hmm. I'm saying? You you've had your experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's talk about the beginning. So before we start talking about you know you making money and all this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And where you are today. Let's talk about the beginning, though, right? So people could at least have, like, some form of relation. Like, where do you come from? You know, what school you went to? And not, like, a scattered thing, but more specifically, let's say, like, after high school, right? Like, what do you think your mindset was at after high school? Man, I think all of us after high school, you know, it's just, like, so many things going through your head. You know, no matter if you're, like, going to college, if you don't think you're going to go to college, you know, we're just still at that age where we're still kind of, like, developing. So, man, after high school, dude, I was just, like... Damn, what am I going to do? I guess, like, my mentality was still, like, okay, I got to find a job or something like that. So, I think it's just, like, uh, everybody's mentality after high school. You just, I guess you want to get a job, do something with yourself, you know, be that person or something like that. Be like, oh, okay, I want to be a successful this, yeah. successful that, you know. I don't know. It's just, like, y- you know, people want to grow up too fast. That's that's our problem, really. But yeah, that, that was me, just normal. Everybody, you know, just wanted to grow up fast and be uh, successful. But what, would you say you had like a like a place where you wanted to be, like a career in mind when you're in high school, right? Like, you know, yeah, some like people, plan, like, okay, yeah, some people were like, oh, I want to go, I want to go to FIU. And then, you know, after FIU, I like to go to this school and mm-hmm. become a doctor or a lawyer mm-hmm. or a fucking sports medicine person. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, mm-hmm. did you have like a picture of what you wanted to be in high school or like, you know, transitioning through? Mm-hmm. No, you know, I'll be honest with you. Like, I didn't really have uh, any plan, just really kind of living in the moment um i don't think i I took school very serious like you know yeah i I don't think i took it very serious so i didn't appreciate it you know like uh, i don't know maybe if i'm a parent one day i'll kind of tell my kid look appreciate school you know get into um fall in love with something i don't know okay you want to be a doctor fall in love with it from the beginning from like high school but no it's just like Normal, yeah, just yeah, just just, just trying to figure it yeah, out. Just trying to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Really, day by day, not really yeah. thinking ahead. Just straight up, which, really which yeah, which, which is like I feel what a lot of us did. Like mm-hmm. I feel like at the time, I, I, me coming from school, I didn't really have like, oh, I want to be this, right? Mm-hmm. Like I had an idea, maybe like I remember people would ask like, oh, what do you want to do? What are you gonna study mm-hmm. when you go to college? I, I can never oh. answer that question. Everybody's like, oh, what do you like? What do you want to do? I, I never could answer that. question. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, bro. Yeah, me, me, I haven't I, experienced I, enough to tell you. Exactly. Hey, I like this. Exactly. Which, which is is very important, right? Because we don't have. Have, so, or some of us don't have those experiences but more importantly like we don't really have like a direction sometimes you get mm-hmm. me like we just see our parents work any job that they could work yeah. to provide essentially you get right. me and yeah. so we never we're not brought upon careers per se right we're just seeing people just well you gotta get get the money in so that you could provide for your absolutely. family absolutely and that's what it is you know when you're a kid whatever you see your parents doing that's gonna mold you you know kids yeah. they, they, they get stuff and it, it sticks to them so yeah. like some kid that grows up in a household where his his dad's a basketball player like his dad plays for the nba like, yeah. what do most of those kids want to do they want to play basketball just like their dad or maybe some sport i don't know you know uh same thing is yeah. if you grew up and your daughter do- your dad was a doctor you probably gonna like medicine or something to do mm-hmm. with that or maybe go the exact opposite i don't know you know yeah f- but it, whatever's within your realm yeah, whatever's like yeah. around you growing up is like that's what you think of so yeah of course of course yeah, i was just thinking about uh you know, just staying healthy, going to the gym, right? We love freaking going yeah, yeah, to the gym. Of course. That was like 
like like everything like 50% back then. of my life was just yeah, going yeah, to the gym after course. high school. I just wanted yeah. to go to the gym. What, what what would you say was your first job then? Like like right, right after high school, what was the first job you got? Oh man, I remember when I was working at uh Dayland Mall mm. and I was uh, working for Wait, uh, Alejandro's this. mom. Oh, that's right. You were. At the, that was your first mall. job? That was your first that job? That was like my first official job. Okay, okay, okay. And, yeah, I remember um, that. Bro, I would in take the black, train ride black and white, from right? Alapada all the way down to Dayland <sighs> to work in a stock room in the back. Yo, by myself, that was so boring. But you got to be grateful I, for the opportunities yeah, that yeah. I give it to you. I it's true. I had a job. But, man, that was my first job. That was, that was yeah, how was that though? Train? So, so you were you were no, in no, the, no, the stock uh, what's that called? What do we call metro it? The, 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 the metro, rail. the yeah, metro. The yeah. yeah that's so I mean, you have Come to take a bus to the metro rail, rail though, right? You have, to, you have to take the twenty seventh Ave bus to the metro rail, right? That's how it worked or no? Or you got picked nah, up at the metro? My mom would drop me off to the to the rail. To the rail? Damn, not even all the way. She said, "I'll take you to the rail." She like she'll pick me up on the rail. I've only taken that metro rail one time coming from work, and I tell you that shit was not it. But I was like, "No, where'd you take it from?" We we were coming we were coming from work late like late at night and I was just there we're just like all right we just kind of wait for the bus we had to take the rail and then the bus uh huh and I was like yo this shit ain't it bro this shit is dark this do you remember here, where you know, took the rail nah, from I don't remember exactly where yeah. I know we're on call away though I know like we're on, like on US one mm -hmm. that that shit yeah. Bro, it's public transportation, that, dude. That shit was not it, bro. I was it's like, public man, transportation. Hey, no. scary, yeah, I mean, bro. There's we, niggas out here tweaking. And we, yeah, of course. We had to take the bus. I remember as a kid, I had to take the bus every single time coming back, right? It was yeah. like that whole bus shit. But, bro, public transportation has never been like a... I feel like even back then, remember when we were kids, we used to be paranoid. Like, damn, mm -hmm. bro, we got to be watching our backs. Like, mm -hmm. uh, somebody might come and try to jump us or try mm -hmm. to rob us. Nah, it was always like an alert. Like for me. It was, just more it was always like, like that for me, man. It's like crazy people here, bro. I'll tell you, look, you know where public transportation is bougie at? In Coral Gables, they have this thing called the, 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 the trolley. trolley. The trolley. trolley. I've seen that. But I've seen the that. trolley yes, start coming up here in Alapata, but the ones that are in Gables, they, you nice. know, they just be chilling. Those are just, nice, though, right? Yeah, yeah I got some free. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But they be a like chilling. A lot of chilling. kids used to use that shit to like leave school. Like, bro, I remember I was on the bus one time on the 27th Ave bus, and this dude got on the bus and he was like arguing with the bus driver because you know he didn't have change or something like that. And he was like, so I'm going to come comes. back. And I'm going to, I forgot what he said. I'm going to kill said, everybody yeah, yeah, in this yeah. motherfucker. We were like, yeah, like, yo, oh, you need to shit. start driving. Get, <laughs> out <of here. laughs> yo, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> the people don't get paid enough to handle the situation. No, nah, they don't. Bro. But they no. fight, though. They do fight. Y'all remember, yeah. remember when we were kids, the bus driver that did the uppercut? You remember that? No. Y'all don't remember the smooth uppercut here in Miami Dade? Oh my goodness! <laughs> there was a bus driver. Uppercut he upper somebody? some girl was acting crazy, yeah, crazy, man. like talking nah, mad shit kidding. though. Like, oh, you pussy, this, that, the third, whatever. The guy stopped the bus. Oh, you know that the little door to slide out, right? Yeah, remember yeah. that? He slides that shit out, and he did the smoothest uppercut you will ever see in uppercut your life. Chick. Uppercut the chick <laughs> and throws her out. Mind <laughs> you, mind you. This was before, like, we were very sensitive about, yeah. like, the abuse and the Me Too and stuff, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's not not saying that it was right back then, but he didn't get as much flack as he probably would now. Today. Yeah, that was in yeah. high school. And the guy grabbed and threw out the bus and kept kept them moving, bro. Mm -hmm. Kept yeah, them moving. Regular day. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. You, know what, day, you know what I but... noticed about buses now? Bro, they're nice now. Yeah, the are they? Really I haven't nice. been in the bus in forever. They got Wi-Fi. Wi so. Forever. They got Wi-Fi. They got AC. They good. They got Wi-Fi? Yeah, they, they got Wi-Fi. Wow. They got wifi. They got wifi wow. for the homeless people that be sleeping. But um, whatever. All right. So okay. First so all, so, so first okay, job. The homeless person got a phone. I'm like, so so first like job you phone. got. You're in the stock. You're a stock boy. So it's called the stock boy. How do yeah, you? Yeah, I was working in the back with like uh clothes. Yeah. Like, how do you this time? Wow, I gotta be like 18, 19. Oh, so you're a baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is your yeah, first job. Yeah. Okay, so how was that? Let me ask you this though. Did you do you feel like you learned anything that transitioned to your next? Fades, like or your next job there or was I, just another yeah job? i think i mean you know um jobs bro you, you learn you know i don't know you learn that okay if i'm late i'm probably gonna get fired gotcha. you, the you, little you shit learning you start learning like the little things little by little yeah. responsibility yeah uh you know monotony as in yo i had to get the clothes hang them up like it was not like no luxurious getting yeah. to at least talk to people you know some people get to work at Foot Locker at least you know every now yeah, and then you get the come. shoes no I was in the back just uh, and it was women's clothing right so uh, it wasn't oh even my like God, too. Yes. yeah it so like not even like you can't even clothing. like so yeah yeah you can't I'm even like, benefit mm, from that mm, yeah yeah monotony bro uh, I white house black market there we go that thing uh, black exactly. and white 
White exactly. House, Exactly. You have market. no idea yeah. what that is. They went this already? <laughs> no, 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 because it's a very, like, uh, clothing store for, like, mature women already, right? It's, like, a more mature store, yeah, right? Yeah, it is. like, uh, I don't know. What like, it was like, third, like, after, like, 30s, 50s. Taylor or something? Like, Type, right, like, like that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's, like, yeah, yeah, it's for more mature women. Yeah. Like it's, So, it, it's, they have nice clothes. Like, don't get it twisted either. But it's not, like, no nice shit, right? Like, no, like, I mean, not. I mean, it's not nothing that I can, like, oh, okay, look, this looks cool. Exactly. I'm guessing you didn't really care about the job. How long did you last? Probably like six months. Six that's months. Where'd you go long. after that? I know niggas that last three days. And that's bro, probably days. less. Six bro, months. I've been around and I've been like three months. I don't know. I didn't really track it. <laughs> no, of course, of course. But where'd you, where'd you go after that? Where did that lead you to? Oh, okay. Well, okay. After that, yeah, yeah, got me thinking. Um, <laughs> was I in the Y first? No, I think. Okay, I was in the hospital first. Yeah, so my I remember mom that. hooked me up with a job in her hospital. She worked at Miami Children, which is now Nick Laus. That was pretty cool. Hey, wait, Miami Children is Carlson and Nelson? Yeah, Nick Lost. Nick Lost now? Yeah, Nick Why? Why did he change the name? Some children. guy bought it. Is that for children no more? Oh, no, some guy bought it. Oh, still for children. Some guy bought it and changed his name. It's oh, gotcha. It's the gotcha. same exact thing. Okay, okay, gotcha. Guy gotcha. bought it, changed the company's name. Okay. Um, the hospital's name. That was pretty cool because, like, you know, you would see some pretty cool stuff. I was working in the OR department, so what surgery. Um, so once the surgery was done, let's say they, I don't know, did some surgery on somebody's knee, did brain, heart. Every type of surgery you can think about for kids. Um, when they took the patient out, we would go in, clean the room, get it ready for the next surgery. Sometimes we would pick up patients to take uh, patients out. Like, you know, if they were done with surgery and they had already recovered, we'd take them out to their room or brought a uh, patient to get surgery done, what the which fuck? is pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah, it was. A, it's called a transporter. You should have fucked around and said it during the surgery. Like, oh, I'm here. I'm here. Help me. What? What? Stop. No, you can. Ah, you know, in, like they have windows. Yeah, you so can, you can see look through. into yeah. the surgery room and see. But I fuck around, be inside, be like, yo. So wait, so so you have to go into it and clean up after. What's the craziest thing you ever saw? No, nah, like blood, you see blood everywhere. everywhere. Right? Um, no, that's not easy. Oh, to clean. the craziest thing I ever saw. <laughs> yo, I hope I don't get. Nah, well, I don't nobody, think I'm gonna get. Nobody gonna watch it. All right. So uh, some kid, some poor kid, man, um, he was young, bro, and he had a, he developed a tumor in his hand. Oh, And they had shit. to cut Amputee? off the, am, amputate the hand um, because if not, the tumor was, gonna, the cancer was going to grow around the whole body. Cancer? I saw the Damn. hand in the, in the jar. Really? I think I, del- I took it to a laboratory because, you know, really? when you, when whatever comes out of a human's body, you got to get it, put it in, well, you don't put it in laboratory, but they, they put have it you for you and it. they have yeah, you deliver it. Yeah. And then yeah, they, so they that's like another department that does something else with that stuff. So do you know what they ever did with that stuff? Laboratory, I mean, I guess it's studies. Yeah, oh, so it's got you. Got, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that actually makes sense. I would think that they would they throw it away or something. The like, whole, uh, no, it's a cycle. No, it's a cycle. Got, it's yeah, yeah, of shit, you so know, I think you, can, you, you cut it off and it's that fresh. And, you know, maybe they can study it to see what's inside the hand. Yeah, you know, yeah. Study more about the hand. Uh, they, never, they never tell you what they did after it, though, right? Like, no, yeah, it's not you. Like, got it like, back. You know, yeah, you're, yeah, just a, just you're just the delivery yeah, boy. I'd be pretty cool <laughs> if you delivered the hand right back. Like, hey, yo, they fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they sent you back. Hey, yo, they fixed it, but I don't know how, bro, but they fixed it again. Back, hand back. <laughs> nah. But, but how, how long did you stay there in the hospital for? I was there for a year. For a year? Did you actually like that, though, or it was eh? Nigga, fuck that. Were you scared? <laughs> you were still you scared? It was probably like one of my weren't funniest you, jobs, to be honest. Weren't you in really? school at this time? I would imagine that. Were you not scared of what? I mean, I don't know. You just, oh, fuck. This is blood everywhere. Niggas no, I'm not like that. I'm not sensitive. There's some people that are sensitive to blood. Is Let me ask you this, though. Is it Strong true? Stomach. Is the hospital yeah, I do. I is do. the hospital thing true? What's like with hospital? the nurses and the doctors and all that shit. Did nah, you ever see any of bro. that? They be nah? fucking. No. Nah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Huh? Sure. Yo, yeah, but did you ever experience that? They, they be fucking. Huh? No. Nurses and, and Okay, they be maybe I'm asking the wrong question. This is what I'm asking. Were there like overly good looking doctors and nurses in this hospital? Were they like no. good looking? Okay, so like the doctors oh, yeah. that were doing so surgery. So it's not like the movie. Dudes. Gotcha. It's not like the no. movies that you see like no. young, I'm hip, like, 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 yeah, like fine oh, ass. No, nigga, oh, gotcha. I'm going to be okay. real with you, dog. If you was a doctor, if you was like a nurse, I'm not letting y'all touch me, though. No out of disrespect. Why? No disrespect. Bro, y'all too young. You got me fucked Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, not a nurse. I want if I was a nurse, you might let me touch you. Old lady handling me, bro. Somebody that had experience, bro. Check this out, though. There was some dude there. Now you're reminding me because you said that. There was some dude there. He was like 30 years old, young. Young dude. Yeah, that's young. He's and he doctor? was like one of the best surgeons there. Whoa. Like he was like one of the best surgeons there. Like, yo, they would call the dude. Yeah, and I yeah, forgot yeah. for some like complex surgery. So, you know, people. Yeah, of course. I get you. 
you would want somebody with experience to like handle you yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, you, yeah, you but not bro. age. How I don't think I care about age. Yeah, of course. Yes. How rare is that? Yeah. Like that dude must have some. But let me ask you something. Background. Wait, wait. Yeah. Have you ever gone to the doctor's office and really been like, nah, I don't want to be seen by this doctor. You look too young. Nah, I never. Really, yeah, I haven't that's, that's, that. that's, 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 that's I'm, I'm talking shit too, Bill. Of that's course, like, that's the second. You just trust that Because think about you. Do you actually even question your doctor? Yo, what school did you go to? Like, like what what medical background? You don't question that shit. Like, yo, your insurance. Like, yo, here your list of medical providers. You go to one of them motherfuckers. But I feel like you're trying them in that sense. It's like, nigga, I well, but, made it. Well, the that thing, should be enough. Well, the things that based on what you said, like you want them with experience, like the only way you would know is if they either have like, yeah, I guess so you search them up, you Google search them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, but I feel like for them, it'll be like, Nigga, I made it. What does that matter? <laughs> Nigga, I was in 12 years. years. That's a little disrespectful. I busted my balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, yeah. On, that's a little disrespectful. Me, oh, what school you went to? Nigga, well, what does They might be females too, so. What do you mean? Well, actually, nowadays, yeah, it might you know, be. I'm you're not right, you're you. right. The one, you uh, might the one be busting some females' balls. Even if they're young, bro, you could tell life wasn't easy for them, bro. In the sense that they had to study their dicks off, bro. Because I remember seeing like this really young girl. Of course. Yeah, ladies. I remember seeing this this young girl in the hospital and how does a girl study her dick off? Listen, bro, I'm trying to get to the That's story. how hard she was studying. That's how hard she was studying. It grew, it grew, it grew in the film. I hear you, I hear you. We went through and like some type she, of like she morphosis. Was, she was like losing hair, like right here in the front. That's and stress, I'm like, bro. That's or cocaine. She looked nurses, young. nurses. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, obviously a surgeon. Yo, know, it takes a lot of school work and all that shit. But nurses, they they work hard, dog. Nurses got some tough. Well, ass don't nurses like work just it, as hard as doctors? Ends. You no, will always so. start. Like, it's, it's a randomest. I don't want to say randomest schedule, but like you know, like look at them now well, it in is, 2020. It no, they're just, you know those schedules are crazy. Nurses put in overtime. Yeah, dog, yeah, yeah. In 2020, no, no, those schedules much, are crazy. How much, try, uh, how much nurses quit? Yeah. Don't they not get paid for that too? Fuck this. They don't get paid for that, right? This is not. For what? I don't yeah, think right. nurses get paid for overtime. Now, nah, because I think if you I put think on a salary base, right? No, this is why though, because if you go past twelve hours, you're actually going against the labor laws in the United States, if I'm not mistaken. So like, you can't actually. It's so, like let's say they're doing more than twelve hour shifts, which mm-hmm. a lot of them are. Mm-hmm. I don't think they get yeah, paid for all, everything all, you do all, after. I think they're. No, but I, say, I, but I don't think you get paid salary after. Base, right, is what you're trying to say. Like salary. That base? could be it too. I don't. I don't I know their sal- salary. But base even if you're hourly, but let's say you're hourly, right? You, if you continue, okay, if you're Let's say you're the boss, right? And you have an employee that's clocking in every single day, 14 hours, 15 hour days, every single day, mm-hmm. right? And you go and take that to the IRS. Mm-hmm. I, if I'm not mistaken, this is not my realm. I don't know law like that. But I'm pretty sure they can come back to the employee and be like, yo, you're you're going against labor laws in the United States because we're not allowed to work more than 12 hours. Like for, for example, right? my prior job, when uh, we logged in through a system. So whenever I would clock out, if I went past 12 hours, it will say, warning, you're going past the maximum allowed you know time within the U- united states labor laws whatever you get me like shit mm-hmm. so it'll tell me that right so i'm saying these nurses they're putting in just as much time if not probably more than the doctors are and they probably know just as much because mind you through experience you're going to learn this shit anyway so there's a nurse there that's 50 years old been in this shit for 30 years and knows everything a doctor knows damn near you get me but they're a nurse you get me or rn or whatever, whatever the fuck it is right registered nurse but if I'm not mistaken, all that time they put in, even for this corona shit, I don't think they get paid for that. Cause, or if you do, it's probably because the United States probably said, all right, cool, because we get it. Yeah, we were in a pandemic. But I think normally I don't think you could because there's, there's been cases that nurses fight that. There's cases where nurses are like, yo, if I'm not getting paid more, then it's going to be a, a no-go. It's going to be a no-go. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's, it's that vibe. Well, that money for corona got to be going somewhere because let me tell you, there was yeah. premiums when people found like somebody had corona. And it was yeah, like yeah a, for sure. Like a serious situation, they had to do a lot of medication. Yeah. Those things were, were premium. Yeah, but but it's shit that you're exposed to. I'm I'm sure. Now, okay, after you know you Money do this year right in the hospital, oh, okay. you're probably like what twenty we'll at this point, twenty twenty one. Yeah, I'm somewhere in the twenty. Yeah, I think like yeah, right? yeah at, at least maximum yeah. twenty one. You go where this time? After YMCA. this, the YMCA. Yeah, Talk to me about that. That was probably uh, a fun experience for you too. That was my first sales job when I was working in the YMCA because I had this I had to sell uh, the gym memberships. So uh, that was pretty fun. Obviously, it's a gym. Like, you know, it's like I'm 21. That's what I love. Course, I love going to the gym. You of know? course. So you get to I dress however you want. I go in early, then change. And it, lived, it was right by my house. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty cool. You could walk. In, it was 10 blocks away. Yeah. 10 blocks away from my house. So yeah, like it was no excuse to be late. <laughs> yeah, yeah oh, of course. No. Yeah. Um, and I was going to school at the time, too, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, I think you were, like too. Balancing those things. Um, what, what did you, what do you mean by selling memberships, though? 
Yes, nigga. Yeah, you sell a gym you membership. Sell a gym membership. People come but to like, the YMCA, you know, they you pay mean, $30 oh, a month. You okay, got to sign gotcha. them up for that. So that's but did you get any incentives for that or no? Not really. No? no. You didn't what get you any mean? incentives for that? No, I don't think so. Got you, got Okay. But I, cause I, I, I guess I wouldn't think that was a sales job because I feel like you never... Did you ever go out of the YMCA to try to recruit people for the YMCA? Like like to come to the gym? or No, no it's an, I mean, it's really a non-profit. So what is it? The people are going to come gotcha. to the gym. Of course, to, of course. The gym. They signed up their kids like, for karate. Now. They signed up for their kids for ballet or I get for the you. gym been, so you don't, LA, You're not LA. pressured to, yo, you got to sell this. No, okay. So it's not like that. It's not like one of those sales jobs where you're like, yo, you got to sell 10 memberships. No. Right, right, right. No. Yeah, yeah, it was just like a, some yeah. chill. LA, some chill LA is like that. They have their workers where they clean, maintain, or, you know, check in, check out people. Yeah. And then they have their salespeople. On yeah. the side, where it's just like, like they, they got an people. office and everything. They'll sit yeah, you down right yeah. there What's in that, that office and tell you, to? okay, so uh, three pants. months is going to be uh, $120. So, or something like that. I forgot. That's not yeah. Crazy. We have yoga classes. I remember classes. I went to LA Fitness one. For that, so like that, but sales yeah. guy tried to get me. They, they separate. <laughs> he said the sales guy tried to get <laughs> me. sales guy tried to get me. Yeah. Right? They always do. They, 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 they be trying to be like mixing and shit. So this is your first sales job? Would you say you like it? Did you like selling stuff? Yeah, I like sales. You know, it's kind of cool. I mean, if you're like uh, just a person that's honest, that doesn't really BS people, and uh, but you like the work, then you know, sales is, is 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 for you. Or obviously, if you like that customer service uh, kind of well, but area. I, your first like, I guess like where you actually had to go out and sell was T-Mobile, right? Where I had to, where I was working, yeah, commission, yeah, and hourly was was T-Mobile, and that was right at the gym. Was from the that gym right to T-Mobile. Gym, yeah. Oh, so it was like right there. So you've had, so let me see, you've had. White House, you've had White House, the hospital, the, hospital, the y- gym, YMCA, and T Mobile. T Mobile. You don't have, you don't have Damn. another one? Or is that all your jobs? What? That's it. Those are the only jobs you ever had. Well, right after high school. Right after high school? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had a warehouse job. You know, yeah, yeah, when I was yeah. freaking 13. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah but, but, like, that don't, that don't count. Yeah, it was yeah. the White House place. Yeah, but you always, like, a hustler, for sure. I mean, I can remember that from us kids, too, either way. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was trying to, like, like get it. Um, What did. Okay, because T Mobile is what pretty much set you forth to wanting to like do what you're doing now right yeah Would definitely had something to do with it you know if you like it you know um it was fun like you know when when you sell whatever you sell you can sell life insurance you can sell freaking stocks bonds you yeah can, when yeah, you yeah. sell and you close a deal it's that little kind of like damn i did this you know i kind of mm. i took somebody from the beginning somebody i probably told me look i ain't gonna buy today somebody i probably <laughs> told me <laughs> yes somebody i probably told me those are the um, niggas that be they falling. had doubts about so the product really or whatever like that. Once they say I'm not ready to buy <laughs> as soon as Yeah, you technically. Uh, the ones that say that I'm a buyer are not buyers. Um, Wait, people will come in and say I'm a buyer? No, people will come in and I'm tell you that I'm going to buy. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. They're and then buyers. they be full of shit. Nah, they're, gotcha. They're, they're looking for deals. That's all it is. Gotcha. <laughs> um, but okay. Yeah, so... Um, T-Mobile, we're talking about yeah. No, T-Mobile, no, T-Mobile, T-Mobile set me up for for sales, yeah. So I mean, no okay, way. so okay, so let's let, let's let's dive in a little bit of that because that's kind of what I'm getting to, right? Like it's it's just to show this, right? Because you know, obviously, we I know you, bro. I've known you since I was like nine years old, but you know, the audience and whoever watches in the future, right? They might not know and understand, right? Because we're gonna get into right now where you are today, but what it took to get there, right? Because yeah, right. although you're young. Like the, the amount of money that you're making and the way that you handle your business isn't mm-hmm. what your typical 20 year old necessarily is doing, right? Mm-hmm. Now, it's easy for people to be like, oh, that's what 20 year olds do because, yeah, if you're on Instagram all fucking day and YouTube, you have like a million and one ads of all these 20 year olds, right? Like, oh, I, I, this is how I became a million. This is how I have a Lambo, right? So a lot of people think that that's how what a lot of niggas is doing, which is not the case, right? There's a lot of, I wanna say regular people, meaning your day to day, nine to five people, right? Who are trying to like, Still make it. You get me into something. Not necessarily because not everybody wants to be a YouTube star, right? Not everybody wants to like be famous or something like that. And there's other steps to take in order for you to get there. You get me? I feel like right now the things that you're accomplishing in your life are mm-hmm. things that you are doing to get there. You get me? Mm-hmm. And and the salary that you have is not even like the medium mm-hmm. income for anybody mm-hmm. living by themselves. Especially mm-hmm. like for example, like in Miami, I think the medium house uh, income household, like the medium, is like in the 30s, 40s, maybe or something like that. Mm-hmm. And that's a household, right? Mm-hmm. For you to live comfortably in Miami, you got to make seventy-seven thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In, in in your house, yeah, I mean that's the medium and what's and what takes to live comfortable is doesn't even exist, right? And you're surpassing those numbers. Mm-hmm. So, whoever's watching this in the future can be like, oh damn, well 
shit, you know, I don't fucking know what I want to do either. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know what I want to do after high school. Mm-hmm. I have no clue. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that you're lost and you have no path. That means Absolutely. that you can definitely work towards still trying to figure it Absolutely. out and find something. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And you, you didn't even, like, do tr- school traditionally. Like, mm-hmm. you didn't do college all four mm-hmm. years, graduate or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You went to mm-hmm. school. You stopped going to school mm-hmm. for whatever reason, and you mm-hmm. kind of kept going. You get know what I mean? And... And I know you have other goals. We'll get to that now. But now, right, you're, now you're in the dealership world, right? Mm-hmm. Selling cars. What helped you first? Or what even got you into that to begin with? Like, what got you being like, you know what? I'm going to go from T-Mobile to selling cars. What, what was the move? Well, first of all, you brought up some beautiful points. I mean, I'm talking about when you said, um, okay, that I didn't, let's say, like, I didn't go to school, right? Mm-hmm. And then I found sales and, you know, I made something out of it. And uh, let's say, you know, obviously my first couple of years, I've been there for three years. I, I would say that I make more than, yeah, the average person that works like, I don't know, nine to five or yeah. salary base or even, you know, some people that have gone to school for years and then they just started on their career. Right. Um, you know, because sometimes you go to school for years and you start you start working and then you, you see you're just making like 30 or, or 40 or something like that. And then like, like, for example, engineers. And then, you know, as they keep going, progress, then they get to like that ninety hundred thousand dollar income. Yeah. And that's where it's like, cool because it's a salary and it's stable so that's 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 a pretty good job Mm -hmm. uh yeah it is for a lot of people people like you know like you know when you've seen the show the shark tank like mark Cuban, what's this guy damon uh uh damon uh, the guy who started food is it damon john yeah yeah, yeah. something john uh, okay uh mr those guys wonderful oh yeah mr wonder those guys they didn't do the thing like that and then uh what's this other one the one on instagram well, you know, some of those guys, they don't go to school. You know, they just have that uh, hustle mentality. Yeah. So there's a plenty of stories of guys that haven't gone to school and, you know, become an owner of a company. Um, and they become millionaires because why? Because they find a problem um, and they fix that problem. You know, mm-hmm. look at this guy with Tesla right now. They sh- sh- look at his yeah. battery power cars. He's. Was yeah. he's the richest man, right? Or something yeah, like right that? now, yeah. Some, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah he's, no, he's, 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 he's the richest Elon, man. Elon, Elon Musk. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's like the richest he guy. He passed Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Um, in the car business, um, the car business definitely teaches you, um, you know, in the beginning, you're you're swimming with sharks for sure. If you've yeah, never worked in the car business, right in the beginning, you know, you're swimming with sharks, you know. And, and But if you focus on those sharks, on, on the guys that are, you know, making two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 a year in the car business, if you focus on them, um, you're going to try to move too quick. So, I mean, in the car business or real estate, you know, those kind of high uh, grossing sales jobs, you got to take it step by step and you definitely have to be in love with with that or, you know, really like it or um, really be passionate about the brand or whatever. And, you know, you got to learn about the brand and then you got to learn about what works with customers because at the end of the day, you know, if you don't sell a car, you're not going to make, you know, money. You're not going to yeah. go home and be able to bring food on the table. Um, so... For me, it was just that, you know, it's uh, just getting into it. And uh, obviously, I work for Toyota, man. I, I, I fell in love with the brand, and people way before me have been in love with the brand because that's been a freaking reputable brand for re- reputable brand for 25 years like that. Like the Tacoma has been a car that's been like the best mid-sized truck for the last 20 years. And if you go to Kelly Blue Book or, you know, Edmonds or any of these consumer reports, you know, Toyota's always on top. So um, you definitely got to respect and love yeah. your brand and then too you just got to have that hustle mentality there's so many uh, examples of very successful entrepreneurs or salesmen or owners or whatever that you know nowadays we're lucky enough that we can just go on youtube and, and try to copy these guys style and you know use what works with, with people so well, what, what did you use, what, 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 what do you feel worked for you like who did you tap into or what did you look into that worked for you because you didn't have no experience in sales yeah. right yeah. basically you had t-mobile yeah. that was like your first one which yeah. i'm sure you got the hang of it there mm-hmm. then but now you're selling right like cars now we're mm-hmm. talking about tens of thousands of dollars mm-hmm. right like a lot more money a, a lot exactly so yeah. it, it, it's a lot more going on how did you get to that point right where it's just like okay well i'm comfortable selling i'm sure you probably got stuck at first so like, you notice there's a there's a there's a problem right a customer is going to come to the store and they have no idea who you are uh-huh. so how are you supposed to make that person trust you how are you supposed to yeah, they have tough. no idea who you are how are you supposed to so there's those people out there i'll give you an example tony robbins uh-huh. legend yeah. legend um legendary person that knows how to create relationships with, with people he has no idea who they are yeah and obviously um he's been doing that for years yeah so uh th- that guy can give you answers to show you how to 
make somebody uh, believe in you and trust you <clears throat> in in a matter of, of minutes. You know, but genuinely, obviously, yeah, yeah. he does so in a, in a genuine way. Right. So, I mean, there's there's ways to learn that. You know, there's there's ways to sit down with somebody you've never met, and they'll, they'll like, look at you after 15 minutes. They'll be like, okay, I trust this guy. Once you have that trust, then you got to make sure that you don't um, take advantage of the trust. You mm. got to make sure that you get their trust, and, okay, they, they have my trust. Let me show you why why it's, it's worth it to have my trust. That's, that's and this, that's is, this is why I recommend let me, right let me ask you something. When it comes to car selling, if is it easy to is it easier to sell a car to somebody you don't know, somebody that's just straight fresh off the streets that they're ready to buy, mm-hmm. but you don't know that yet. Mm-hmm. They don't even know that yet. Mm-hmm. Or someone that recommended you. So somebody, hey, look, they sent me here. You're supposed to be a good guy. He's cool with me, so I that's, trust you. That's a great question, Ahmed. You see, um, that is a really good question. I'll tell you why. Because referrals, first of all, me when I get referred to somebody, I'm like, damn, wow, this person, or their friend, talked good about me. That's, that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm glad to, to hear that people are talking good about me, about my business. But then there's that like, man, I don't want to let this person down. So it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's kind of mm. hard. Depends. You know, somebody new, somebody yeah. fresh, you never met. You're kind of not scared because it's like, okay, it's, it's, this is my chance to show this person that um, everything about me. Right. But somebody has referred. It's like you kind of get a little there's a standard anxious. Already. You're like, okay, I don't want to fail this person. And then sometimes that person thinks that you're going to, be uh, uh I'm not, I don't mean to say it like that, but you're gonna be God that you're gonna yeah, out of nowhere like, here. Like here's a brand new car, up, right? Thousand right. dollars. Here you go. It's yeah, yours. Yeah, yeah. Nothing yeah. else. And so, but I feel like it's yeah. more like a comfortable thing. It's like, oh, I'm comfortable with you. I, I don't think it's like, oh, you're gonna help me get a free car or some shit like that. I feel like it's more like but it probably I don't depends know on how you think about it. You gotta anything. take it the same. You gotta whether they're new or referral man, just just try your best. You know, there's there's a lot of salesmen out there that are that are that are pretty selfish. I how think often about do you close? Those two. Referrals, you close them more. Uh, than fortunately, than. yeah, of course, uh, you know, because a lot of referrals, you know, obviously trust you more right off the get go. Um, I'm kind of even on both sides, to be honest with you. People I've just met, like when I when I talk to customers, I talk to most customers on the phone, and we get a lot of done over the phone nowadays in the car business. You know, yeah, gonna, nowadays in the car up. business, it's a little easier, bro. Really, up. it's not. You don't have to do everything in, in person. In person, in the car business nowadays. Especially that's, in 2020, that's, we that's had that's to, kind of we had to do a really good job in that in 2020. In 2020, we had free deliveries. Like you know, we'd you know you can send that's us your. That's weird. That's weird. Because I, I me mean, personally, I would want to see the car. Yeah. In person. Yeah. I mean, but that's but really the only chance, in person, right? Mm-hmm. And somebody just hey, look, it's a good car. Yeah, but you know, you're not gonna tell me every little itty bitty thing about the car. I have mm-hmm. to see it personally. I'll tell you my experience of, of of customers that have bought cars without having to see them. People that have had Toyota for years, and they're like, they oh, tell no, me, I know that Toyota. Well. New cars mostly. I, they're like, oh, I know that Toyota is fine. Trust me. Just let's do the numbers. Boom. Yeah. That's that's. Yeah. Wild. I, I've done, bro. I've, I've done fresh new car deliveries. Now, obviously, you know the customers get to inspect the car when when it gets home. They get to drive it around, make sure that it's good, yeah, so it's, it's safe, not, no it's problems not like with fine. it. As as We're not just gonna like, leave hey, the look, car hey. there here. Look, no, it's yeah, no. It's like all right. Hey, I'm a professional give you a salesman time. will take the car to you, and you know they'll show you everything. They'll show okay, look. Here's how this technology works here. Um, look, here's the, what's it called? The um, spare tire. Here's in the back. Here's all the manuals. Yeah. Here's how long you're going to have your warranty for. You know, a professional yeah, they, they salesman would, would do that stuff. Yeah. So really, in, in any type of business, it's all, it's all about the sales guy. I mean, come on. How much times yeah, have you do. gone to, like, a, sure. something simple? How much times have you gone to, a, I just thought about this because I went to, like, a Dunkin' Donuts. Like, how much times have you gone to, like, a fast food place? And then you get somebody on the window, and they're like, just, they, they, they do not care about what they're yeah, doing. They don't give a them. damn. They don't want to pay attention to you. And then out of nowhere, you've gone to this fast food place, and this guy's like, like nice. Chick-fil-A. He's like, oh, you want this extra this? Like, or? like Chick-fil-A. Yeah, you basically like Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. Yeah, but they get paid for that, bro. Cool. If you don't do that, don't they're going to know. Yeah, that don't matter. Bro, it, it, it doesn't don't matter. cost yeah. anything for us to be kind yeah. you know, and genuine. So yeah. if you, if anybody, whatever business you're at, if you understand uh, you know how to just be kind to people and be honest with people, bro. You'll you'll be successful. Bro. Who flourishes? Successful. Who flourishes in the business of cars? There's car sales in the in the um, like what what personality could like for example me right? I'm someone who's quiet. Um, if you tell me you know you told me about sales before, I'm like nah, that's not really my thing. Could someone like me who's quiet, kind of an introvert? I am an introvert by the way, like as personality goes. Mm-hmm. You get me? Um, that's not contrary to like how I am with my friends different but 
could someone who's an introvert, quiet, kind of shy person excel mm -hmm. at car sales? I love that question, dog, because it's like, you know, when you think about a car salesman guy, you've seen, you know, the car salesman guys in the movies or in the commercials, you yeah, know, when they make fun loud, of the car salesman guys, it's front. the guys that are like, yeah, you know, like super extrovert, just like you said, you know, that are, you know, kind of mm -hmm. chit chatter too much. You know, I think nowadays um, those guys aren't, aren't going to cut it. You know, those guys that are just talkative aren't going to cut it. I'll give you an example. There's this guy that's been working with Toyota. Um, he's an old school Cuban guy. You know, he's probably in his 40s. Um, he's been working with Toyota for like 20 years. And the guy is a mega introvert, you know, in, the, in, in this sense, okay? Obviously, he's, he has friends in the dealership. We're all cool with him. The guy's yeah. super respectable. You know, we laugh or we'll make jokes. Mm -hmm. But the guy... If you first meet it, he's not like the most extrovert guy. Right. Um, he just has this gigantic uh, electronic binder of just customers that he has sold to before. So he has just slowly built his customer list. Mm. And his customers, if you've ever talked to his customers, they don't want to hear from nobody but him. They mm. want to talk to him. But the guy is to himself. you know, And he's not one of those like just typical car smells and salesman guys to just throw you on uh, any car I and not the care about it. I see that. I see that. Yeah, yeah. 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 So like, that guy know. has just been quietly grinding and just building his customer list. And that's all it is. Do you people know? respect him? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's like one of the I most respected like, I feel like that's there. appealing to somebody. Yeah, because if, sure. you, if, you're I, outside, I if you're outside looking at a car and some loud mouth dude just like, yeah, what's up? Yeah, you know, it's not genuine. They're just trying it's to not. show and they're just trying to make like it's make not. you feel special. And it's not. When somebody quiet, yeah. it's just like, Hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? Hey, my new you are very genuine with you. That, that exactly. kindness. Exactly. I'm not trying to be extra. I'm going to be straight up with you, and I'm going to be nice. I'm going to take care of you. Exactly. I think that's what, and especially a lot of older people. Too. Yeah. I feel like a lot of older yeah, people do sure. like that. Yes. Because that they know. They've been through it. Yeah, they, that whole loud mouth thing, that usually falls for, like, younger the younger crowd, yeah. I feel like. Because they're just like, oh, fuck, it's making me feel mm -hmm. special. I should probably, like, get it. it's a good deal. Mm -hmm. And they just fall in that. They yeah, and that's the beautiful thing is that you really, you got to be yourself, you know. And so that that's, in the car business, you'll, you'll learn, or in most sales business, you'll learn that it's not that you have to um, always be different with everybody. So, like, I don't know if uh, you got this young person, you don't have to exactly um, agree with everything that young person says. Even you know? though yeah. they don't know anything. Yeah. Uh, Even though they exactly. do everything. They exactly, know everything. exactly. So, you know, the yes man of car salesman is what I'm trying to say. That's that's over with. Now it's just gotcha. who knows that's the most about this brand? Yeah. Who is going to answer these questions correctly for me? Yeah. Like if I ask you, oh, is this truck all-wheel drive? Are you going to be like, oh, I don't know. Let me ask my boss. Or are you going to? You're going to no, be able to. Silly. Silly. I think if you're selling something, you should know your product exactly. first. That's exactly. very so that's. But, you know, back in the days, so um, back in the days uh, when people went – Obviously, the computer, our laptops and all that stuff, we didn't have access to freaking go on Google and see what the company specs. has the most stars or which ones have the best reviews. Before, you just had to just drive to a dealership and see what they do. Yep. So, like, you know, that is over. Is the, the salesman that took advantage of that is over. It's all about, you know, online now. It's all about talking to people, making people's lives easier, dog. Like, yeah. if I tell you I'm going to deliver the car to your crib and you don't have to drive uh, over here or get you don't an have to get here. into an argument with me here you don't have to be here for six hours you know that's, that's what people beautiful. like nowadays in yeah. any business everybody loves um what's easier or, or i mean sorry what's convenient. why do you think amazon convenient. has exploded right like yeah, yeah exactly it's convenient, convenient. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's of course of course what what do you think though that kind of because what you said is actually amazing right like yo if i could just t call somebody yo bro i want this car and the high looks already bring it to me does every dealership do that or is it just y'all or is that no, competitive a lot thing? of dealerships are doing that. You know, that's okay. why Car Carvana was created and oh. Vroom. You know, those are applications. You can go online right now, put your whole credit application right now, and they'll deliver the car via tow truck to your house. Wow. And then you'll get like a seven-day trial or something like that. So there's a lot of um, aggressive companies out there right yeah. now. And really competitive. Yeah, and are people just got to keep up with the times. Yeah. You work. You say you work at Toyota, right? Yeah. You know West Kendall Toyota? Of course. You know them? Yeah. Are they the most popular one in Miami right now? Business, especially with Toyotas, it's like this. It's like this. One month, Hollywood sells most. One month, I think in December, we had, oh, damn, was it this? this I forgot what, what month it was that we, um, I think we were like number two or number one. It, it kind of changes hats. Because uh, I've been there one time mm -hmm. for to get a car, and I'll tell you what, I did not like the yeah, service. Exactly. I did not like who exactly. the fuck was attending me. Exactly. And some fucking weirdo manager came in, tried exactly. to like, 
interrupting the conversation, trying exactly. to look all cool, and he just kind of left. And I clearly saw that. I was like, bro, we're not getting a car here at yeah. all. Like, yeah. This yeah. Is, yeah, exactly. This exactly. guy can bullshit. First of all, he didn't have the car that we wanted. Mm-hmm. So off bat, we're like, hey, we got to get out of here. We're just going to cut true. our losses, and we might look around, bullshit. That's true. But it's, all, it's true. Just, it's all that service. It's all that kindness. It's all that genuine. Because you can step in there. Them niggas is out there pulling cars, bro. You got to be genuine with these people, bro. You because have to. You have to. I know for sure I was not going to buy a car. I wasn't going to allow my girlfriend to buy a car that day from anybody there, no matter what the price was. See, and you bring out that whole, um, the car wasn't there. You see, that trick doesn't even work anymore because sometimes salesmen would say, oh, yeah, the car's still here. No, it's been towed for a week. Ah, the car's still here. Come in. You get in there, and then they try to put you on another car. Uh, that's I exactly what they did. that entirely, bro. That is, that's that's that exactly is horrible. what they did. It's just like. You're killing somebody's expectation. Of they course. expected um, That's exactly A, what and you're trying to give them B. Yeah. Like, no, no, they don't. They, um, so, yeah, oh, my God. I had that happen today. I tell people all the time, like, if I'm not at the store, because I have people call me today. Yeah. I'm like, look, I'm off today. Give me to tomorrow. I'll, you know, I'll check if the car is there. If it's there, perfect. If it's not, then, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Because that's a complete waste of time. Of course. If you ever try to trick somebody to come in. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't even work. Probably 5% of the time, something like that will work. Wow. Let me ask you something. No, what which are, is very bad. What are the... Very low. What are the not... As a car salesman, what are things that you are not supposed to do that that's not written anywhere? This is just things that people tell each other, hey, you're not supposed to do this. This is like a, a, hidden, a hidden rule, a hidden rule, so to say. Uh, what are you not? Uh, okay, so yeah, unwritten rule in the car salesman life. Unwritten rules. Uh, let's see. I mean, for me. For you, yeah. Uh, or what you've seen, or what you heard, anything, anything. I guess this is not an unwritten rule, but uh, just to give you some of the ins, like in any business, in car sales, you have like a whole vocabulary of what they, you know. Um, call different situations and stuff like that so it's funny like when you get in the car business and most like pretty successful car business they'll have their own their own way of talking you know like just like if you're like uh, in wall street like you know they have their own way yeah, of talking the lingo yeah uh rules man what are you not supposed to do uh i guess i'll give you some rules that i've learned uh to to be successful in car sales um or some hidden rules Man, that's a good question. Yeah, like, well, because it's essentially it'll be like this, right? Like, what is your approach when you first got somebody? Like, somebody's walking in the lot, what's your approach? Like, are you reading this person? Like, is this person already looking for you usually? Or are you just, are you just like, is it like a free-for-all thing? Like, what is your, like, I guess, rule of engagement, right? Because let's say someone's watching this right now. Maybe they're interested in selling cars, mm-hmm. and they have no clue mm-hmm. what to do, how to start. What would their mind frame okay. even be? All right, well, we'll talk about position, and uh, there's there's two um, usually sales department um, in most dealerships. There's the customer, there's the salesman that they're called floor sales. Mm-hmm. Floor sales are salesmen that if a random customer just comes to the dealership and and parks, you know, those customers belong to the floor salesman. It's just mm. a okay. random customer that's coming in, never gotcha. contacted anybody. I work for the internet department. So that's customers that are online. They could be from another country. They can be from another state. Customers that are going on the internet, trying to search the best price. Um, You know, those are really a lot of customers. Uh, And that's the internet department. So those, we usually appointment-based salesmen. So we usually just, you know, go off by making appointments and stuff like that. So that's uh, both departments. I would definitely recommend, if somebody was watching this, just try it out, really, because, I mean, if you go into car salesman, the managers are going to put you wherever they want anyways. You know, they're going to put you on the floor or on the Internet. Depends on what they want to do. So if, mm. if somebody would like to try it, I would just say, yo, try out whatever brand you like. You know, if you like Dodge, if you like Jeep, if you like um, Honda, if you like Toyota, if you want, if you like to work in something more luxurious, like, you know, Mercedes, uh, the luxury brands and all that stuff, yeah. then. You got to try it out. You got to like cars, you know. I mean, is there a special, is there like a specific time of the month or the year where it's the best time to buy a car for you and the customer? You, it's got to be within the customer. Door. I always, you know, tell people that because, you know, people always say, okay, when's the best? Technically, at the end of the year, obviously, most dealers are trying to make their quotas. Yeah. So, but my advice to customers or to 
No, it's just to customer. My, this is going to be advice for customers. Don't think about going in on a specific time of the month. Think about going in whenever you're ready, whenever financially you've set a budget. You say, okay, I need a new car or a cheap little used car to be able to get around. There's the money I have. So I would, I would say um, advice to the customer is whenever you're ready. But technically, to answer your question, usually at the end of the year, um, dealers have extra incentives. Toyota, for example, we have about – fifteen hundred dollar extra incentives just on the end of the year like aside from whatever other rebates there might be fifteen hundred just for that december it's called toyota thon toyota thon is a is a is it starts from november to december you know and everybody has their own honda has uh man what is it um i forgot the uh lexus has uh december to remember um yeah, Everybody they, has their like holiday long, like yeah, yeah. sale thon so, you know. Everybody to, has their yeah, own yeah, freaking yeah. furniture companies have their yeah, holiday yeah, yeah. sale thon So, yeah, end of the year is really a good time. What What would you say to get to the fun shit, right? Fun shit. You make bread. Mm-hmm. How do these people get to the money? Where do they go? Where the money reside? <laughs> Yo, I love that guy. Bro. First of all, that guy was hilarious. That guy's making money. That guy's that he guy has to be making probably money. Probably has course. customers like crazy, like a motherfucker. Oh. Eh. <laughs> the gig what do you mean? Where do you get to where the money resides? Yeah, how do you? Because not like everybody that. Money? Yeah, because like for, there's people that go go into like the the whole sales. sales yeah. shit and never even accomplishes yeah, yeah, yeah. no money in there. Yeah, I mean, how yeah. do you get to making the money? The kind of money that you time, making? patience, and you gotta be willing to learn, dog. Everything is just that, bro. You know, um, everything is just just that being willing to learn to like really read your stuff up and um, both on the sales and product. I think that's keep it, keeping yeah. it simple, stupid. Learn how to be a good, trustworthy salesman that people actually freaking refer cus- refer you refer customers. Yeah. Think about you whenever they want to do this. No. Learn how to be an excellent salesman. And uh, I'm not gonna no no. <laughs> I'm, learn, learn because, about your product. <laughs> I'm loving because I'm thinking it was like, damn, he was a real car so it's like three years later. Like yeah. that. That's the type of impact I feel like every car salesman should have. Like. After three years, I bought this car. Damn it! I finally paid it off. Yeah, that car sales was amazing. Treated me it's, nice. It's a good thing Every when time it I want to go there, I want to talk to him. I don't want to talk to nobody. And it's a good thing else. when it happens to you though, like as a salesman, when they actually like call you back, bro. It's a it's a good feeling. So you got to take that and you got to use that to like kind of motivate, motivate you. Like, okay, you. this like, person I'm thought about good me. Maybe job. other people are gonna think like, about me exactly. if I do. Uh, and that, and I'm just gonna say that too because I feel like you know, whenever you're making any of these deals, right? It's never really like. Like, it's never really, it's, it's almost like, okay, what's the lowest price I can get, right? That's usually mm-hmm. what people are going for, right? That's mm-hmm. that's usually what, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm saying usually, though. Usually, mm-hmm. usually people are like, all right, man, mm-hmm. what's the lowest, like, you know, price I can get I can pay mm-hmm. a month or whatever, right? That's, that's for any, that's for a house, mm-hmm. that's for your car. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, you don't, you want to pay the lowest interest rate possible. Nigga, Toyota was giving out free cars, people be out there lining up for free Of course, cars. and people that don't even that's drive how, to you. That's how it is for anything and mm-hmm. everything. Of course. Continue, yeah, so so again, like you know, so so that, that that's like the best, right? Like people are trying to usually get that lowest deal. So I just feel like in any situation where you know a lot of money is involved in and you take the time, like you're saying as a salesman, to treat somebody with dignity, with respect, and not try to book them. You get me? Try to actually like like yo, because I know you've told me stories about like, you know, there's certain people that just aren't ready for that kind of commitment. You've told mm-hmm. them, like, yo, bro, look, bro. Go back home, give it a couple years or whatever, get your credit a little bit better, and mm-hmm. then you know come back. There's I've turned people there's over. people that are like, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it, but we'll make it work. This at the third, just so they can get a little bit of bread. You know what yes. I'm saying? And when it comes to dealing with a lot of money and the fact that a lot of our culture and a lot of our society, it's specifically us, right, like black Hispanic men, we are or and women aren't necessarily versed in financial literacy. No. You know what I mean? Yeah, so we're not. So we don't know when we're going to go finance a car that yo, this might not be the best. You know what I mean? Move for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But the fact that people still feel good means that you make them feel good. You make them feel comfortable enough for them to tell their homeboy, yo, bro, I had this dude, bro, and he hooked it up, X, Y, and Z. By the way, I had to cut you off because okay, when okay. you're talking about the culture and how we are not well-versed in finance, telling anybody watching this right now, I'm telling y'all, go sign up for Ramsey Reset, bro. That is, it's, mm-hmm. it's, you, you get a couple laps that'll show you everything that you're wasting money on. Mm-hmm. And it'll, it has like this debt snowball app that lines up. Okay. This is my medical bill. This is my, everything I owe on my car. This is what I owe on credit cards. And then you start attacking it. Go follow Dave Ramsey, man. And, and, and sign up for the financial recess. I think it's like, I think they had like a special, it was like, oh man, was it like $50? And then you get like a bunch of videos yeah. 
from Chris Hogan and all these people and um, you get to use the applications. Man, you got to get literate on debt, man, because the, the United States is a beautiful country, but it is a capital country. They want to sell you the newest clothes. They want to sell you the newest phones. They want you to finance everything. People will freaking finance dogs nowadays, bro. No, you can finance everything. Get basically. yourself some financial literacy, dog. I don't care what you do. Get yourself some financial literacy. I'm glad. Understand and I'm debt glad. And I'm, that. I'm glad that you said that too, right? Because you know, for those of you that don't know, Dave Ramsey, very old school guy on the way he handles his money, right? He's not like a lot of the newer people. Not saying that the newer people have a bad way of doing it. Um, if you know the strategies, then you know, then you know what you're doing. But the, I'm, I'm glad you said that because one very important thing, bro that you said about even financing, so we could jump right back into the topic. Understand that when you go swipe your credit card, you finance money too. That's what you're doing every time you swipe your credit card. So don't think that you're buying a good or a service when you swipe your credit card because that's the that's the lie that you not only tell yourself, but they tell you too. You get me? Because you're literally borrowing somebody else's money to go do whatever the fuck it is that you needed to do, and then you're going to pay them back more money. At the end. And people are going to tell you the whole, oh, but if you pay it at the end of the month, then you don't pay no. Okay, that's fine. But how many people actually do that? You get what I'm saying? So, but to jump back into, to jump right back into it, right? You have, Yeah, I'm glad that we stopped at that because, yeah. you know, um, I know you, George. I know you're one of those people that, that you have always, bro, respected, like, controlling where your money goes. And I got a little bit of that from, from, from you. And yeah. I'll, pff, once I started making money, that's the problem with making money is that it's not all beautiful about was, making money that was gonna be my because you have to know where that money's going and i was throwing money bro ask uh you know my wife emma mm -hmm. i was throwing money anywhere i'd freaking i want to go get fire gamos. oh i want to get the magic belt oh i want to go shop at nordstrom from now on oh i want to you know when i go to dinner i want to spend 300 dollars. Mm -hmm. like financial literacy is, is is number one bro yeah before making money it's financial literacy that's 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 super important. Yeah, I, I was literally gonna ask you that right now too. I was gonna ask. So, how has making money, right? Like, what has been your lessons, right, from from the time you've made money until now that you've made greater money? What what have been the lessons that you can share with us? Very simple. Just I'm gonna just leave that at this because I think this just answers that. Money goes out just as quick as it comes in. That's it. That's that's what I sometimes can, quicker. That was my lesson making money is mm -hmm. that no matter how much you make it can go right back out and right back into the country uh which is good you know we're we're buying in our country i guess right. in a way but it it goes right back but to the man yeah good for you it goes though. right back to them exactly Dyer. i feel you um i'm good on the questions you got anything else uh no nah, man it just uh i had a i had a, I had a, I had a my best friend he bought a he bought a car not that long ago talk that talk Tell and, me about it. And he told me what happened. He told me what happened. Nothing happened. He got the car. He was straight. But the situation leading up to it, I was like, I was like, yo, that's fucked up. Uh, he went to go. He he bought a car, whatever, for his family. He paid it off. It was him. Him and his dad paid it off. They helped out. What it was good. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to go into the DJ buy a Jeep. And he's like, yo, we've been trying to get this car for Jeep for a long time. We haven't been able to do it. They first time around, they didn't happen. Now that they have like some credit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because they didn't have credit before. They one day it's like yo we out. They slid they slid to the dealer. They saw a jeep that they liked, and they was like all right let's go get this jeep. And the salesman was uh, he said all right uh, who's paying who's paying for the jeep? And he was talking to his dad. He's like mm -hmm. oh my son. He's like all right who's financing for the jeep? He's like uh he is. He's like he's like yeah I get it but who's signing? He's like he is. And I he told me I'm like bro this nigga is trying you. He thinks you're a little kid. You don't yes. have any money. You don't have any yeah, credit. Yeah. And when they ran him, 27 banks approved him. They got the car right there. Yeah. And after that, when he came back, he started, he talks, he's talking to him. He's like, hey, Mr. Nawai, what's going on? How's your name? Like, this is what we're going to do. It. And he didn't think anything about it. Mm -hmm. But to me, that's already like, yo, you, thank you, but you need to get the fuck out of my face right now. Yeah. I, automatically, that's trying. You're trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. trying. That is yeah. a try. No, I heard, I, heard, I, I think you, 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 uh, and I feel like there's salesmen out there that just, and it's kids, it's also kids' fault. It's just like mm -hmm. kids come in there, oh, I'm going to get the best car. <laughs> yeah, okay, where's your credit? Yeah. Uh, what you got? The kids now they just walk in. Just, I want a Hellcat. Where's the Hellcat? Like, bro, you know how much a Hellcat costs? Like, there's <laughs> like, there's like a lot of people yeah. like that. <laughs> That's what I was saying, bro. You there's know. a lot of people like that, but there's also a lot of like a salesman that just like, oh, this fucking kid thinks he's gonna get a Hellcat. Yeah, man, really not. you you gotta you you know you gotta learn your your, your lesson there, dog. When you're talking about auto, you know, yeah. cars, you yeah. know, sometimes some salesmen that work in dealerships forget that you know you're talking about the the top 
second thing that people waste their money on. You know, think about what's what's the most expensive thing on a normal family. You got your house, house you know, mortgage car. or whatever. Car. Right behind it should be a car. Yeah. Unless you're a freaking doctor and you got hundred thousand dollars in student loan or something like that. Yeah. But yeah. Right next to that is usually a, a car. So yep. Yeah, bro, you gotta you gotta treat it uh, sensitive, and you gotta respect whoever said they're gonna sign, bro. Every time somebody tell me they're gonna sign, yeah, I don't I care. I have the power. Whatever. Like, hey, I don't want you to close this. I want yes, somebody else. especially now. Now, I give sometimes people recommendations because sometimes there's people that come up to me like, "Yo, I don't want to run my credit. I'm financing for the first time. What do you recommend?" And I'll sit down and I tell them straight up. I'll be like, "Look, when you're finding when you're financing for the first time, you had no credit. You had no credit card. You're expecting a dealership to give you a car that costs twenty thousand dollars. Think about it." What type of friend to give you twenty thousand dollars and, and let you, you pay them in six years? You got no, no credibility. Friend would do that. Why would a bank do that? Yeah, of course. So I tell them straight up, bro, you need money down, but no, obviously not in a rude way. You know, obviously I'll try to sit down and talk to them, but I'll tell them straight up. Yeah, and that's how it has to be. Has how to much? Be how much money down exactly would a deal like that take? Let's say a twenty thousand dollar car have no credit. How much that down do I need to put? Twenty twenty five percent. Twenty twenty five percent. So about five bands in. Mm-hmm. All right. Woo, okay. Now, there's some banks, there's some dealers that um, kind of work those things out. Right, of course, yeah. But, you know. For, for the most part? For the most part. It's, yeah. you know. Bank Look, bro, 20, I think I, I think the, the most uh, impactful thing anyone can ever take from these kind of conversations, especially if you're someone younger, and, and if you're someone old, this doesn't matter, right? There, there's no age to finances, right? You could be 50 starting off, you could be 20 right now, Amen. right? And the most important thing that anyone could take is... Be financially literate, meaning understand how your money works, understand where your money is going, understand that every dollar has a purpose. Right. A lot of people, they do, you I know, love that. I mean, what, what my, and just to share with you, but my biggest lesson was when I split my bank accounts. Mm-hmm. Once I like put, I opened like, I have another bank, an online bank, and once I started opening multiple accounts and starting to put money there, that, I think that's what helped me the most. But even then, I've still been out, like just like you said, you know, I've gone out and bought clothes and expensive dinners and expensive night out in Miami and shit like that. You get me? So I haven't been perfect. You get me? Mm-hmm. But the lesson is that is understand where your money is going. You mm-hmm. get me? Understand that. And understanding like putting a purpose, right? Like meaning like like being able to like separate and mm-hmm. understand that. Because before you even get to like, you know, where mm-hmm. you're at, right? Mm-hmm. When you get there, you don't want to be the type of person that got there and then lost it all because mm-hmm. you didn't know how to handle that. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? And exactly. now you, all you do is when you're 50, 6 years old, you talk about, but when I was a youngster, you know what I'm saying? I had me a little bit of money and you know what I'm saying? You don't ever want to be that person. So I think that's the most powerfulest thing. You get me? Because yeah. yeah. I, I, and I think what you talked to today was just, it's just simple, man. Like it's going to require a lot of hard work mm-hmm. and you got to love what you do. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. You get me? And, and that's uh, powerful. As far as that, it's like you can enjoy, you know, some things. You can enjoy mm-hmm. buying clothes, like you For just sure. said. Yeah. But imagine if every month you can do in this. Moderation. Imagine if every month, yeah. okay, I say, okay, I got $4,000 coming in. Let's see here. Okay, I got to pay. Mm-hmm. Let me pay this car off. I'm going to knock it out. You know, yeah. whatever. You don't have a car bill anymore. You don't have a credit card bill anymore. Let's say you don't have no bills except, like, the rent or your mortgage or something like that. Okay, this is what I need for the rent. You know, I could use $300 this month. Um, I don't know, buy me some clothes or for restaurant or yeah. food. It's just that. It's just... Just like you said, every dollar goes somewhere. Yeah. And Dave Ramsey says it just like that. It's like, yo, every, as long as you're calculating where your money's going, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, you got to start off yeah. with, a, with a goal. Like, yes. all of this has to be, your why. the beginning of it is a goal. Why am I going to do this? Like, is it because I want to get completely off of debt or do I want to save money for X, Y, and Z or something like that? So it, it all starts with, uh, what, what's the goal? And you got to write it down. Yeah. You know, I've, sh- I've had this uh, app thing. Um, we paid it in the beginning of January. So I got it right here, man. I wish I could put it up or whatever. Yeah. There's the Baby Steps one and there's the Every Dollar one. The every Dollar one. Huh? And it's cool. It connects to your bank account, dog. Yeah. And it, it shows you, okay, look, you got all these things. Where are they going? Yep. Oh, man. Yeah, it's, it's 100% worth yeah. it, bro. It, 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 yeah, because it gives, what it does is that, that's what happens, right? Usually people have one one account, right? You have a debit card. I mean, I'm sorry, you have a, a checking account and a savings, right? So, okay, fine. I get paid. Um, I paid all my bills for the day, mm-hmm. right? Let's say you sent out all your money, whatever. You sent it all out for the day. Cool. Now I have this much money. All right, cool. Now this is the money that I can enjoy. So maybe I'll save 100 bucks and, and the rest of the money is mine. That's a bad. That's already bad. Because exactly. you, you don't even, when you say it's mine, that means that, well, maybe I go pay some gas with this maybe i'll go to the movies with this maybe and that's where i was fucking up right because a lot of times that would happen to me i'll look at my bank account and be like okay boom I, all the bills are paid now i'm like okay now all this money's mine cool and then you don't realize oh shit i barely got money left now because you didn't you didn't purpose anything you you went free for all what you got me very kid exactly 
Exactly. Mm-hmm. You, that does. You gotta line up your emergency funds. All those things. One day we're gonna have a financial conversation. Then fuck it. You know we, sure. we'll bring it on. But um, again, like I said, bro, for anybody watching this, if you, and this not only goes for any car business. This goes for sales. I feel like anything in life, right? Like if anything in life that you really want to achieve and do yeah. something in, you got to love what the fuck you do, you bro. Because you're gonna be doing it every day. Number one. Yeah, yeah, I mean you're gonna be doing it for hours. So you need to love and like mm-hmm. what you do. You know what I mean? So I think that is very powerful what you said. I think that what you said, like a lot of people are gonna be able to actually take it and like run with it because. Because it's practical shit. Yeah, I mean, shit yeah, that bro. you can apply this, this, right this, now. This, this, this for the youth, yeah, man. It's, it's, exactly. It's shit that you can apply right now, man. So thank you for coming, bro. We appreciate you, bro. You know, it's always love. love baby. It's always love. Love, um, baby. Y'all good back there? No more questions? Oh, I have one question. One question. What's up? So now that you got the monies, what you doing next? I'm going to What's Disney What's your big next step? <laughs> so I'm going to Disneyland. Disney you see a whole bunch of fat white America. That's what the <laughs> fuck you're going to see. A bunch of sad people. Uh, uh, I'm tired. I probably see Donald Trump. He's hot. You know, nah, he got a vacation he now. He won't. He won't see Donald Trump. That nigga not going to Disney World. <laughs> that nigga going to DR with his fucking mansion. He going to. With Secret Service, though. Uh, All right, man. Well, once again, we thank you guys for watching. We appreciate you guys. This is I'm Down. Um, We have. Actually, I think I changed the Instagram name, right? Did I put I'm Down Podcast? Have you checked it? All right, if Instagram, we're I'm Down Podcast now. Just to let y'all know who the fuck I'm Down is so you don't be confused as to who we are. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, that's going to get changed soon, but it's still like I'm down. Oh, um, wow. You got anything to plug in? You got uh, your Lewis. Lewis, motiv- Lewis. motivates man. Follow me. All right, that's where you sell and stuff like that too, right? You yeah, put a lot that, of that's your, where you like, can contact me for sure. Yeah, so if you got Always. anything for Lewis, any questions or anything like that, yeah, y'all yeah. can hit him up. Uh, once again, man, we appreciate you guys for watching. Until next time, this is I'm down. Peace. Peace.